In John chapter 10, verses 11 through 18, it says this. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. And then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. Wow, stark contrast. <laughs> I'm the good shepherd and I'm going to stick around. The hireling doesn't care about you. And if anything being bad happens, he's out of there. All right. Then the wolf attacks the flock, scatters it. The man runs away because he's a hired hand and he cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen and I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. I'm going to just stop right there. Um, did you catch what Jesus just said? I'm the good shepherd. You know that I'm good shepherd because I lay my life down for the sheep. He says, there's another sheep pen that are going to be a part of this and they're going to know my voice. That's us, guys. Because when he was speaking, he was speaking first person to the Israelites, to the Jews, who he came to first. And then he says, however, there are more sheep and they also will hear my voice. For the last four weeks, we've been talking about communicating with God. Communicating with God. And we are invited to, as Jesus just said, hear the voice of our shepherd. Amen? There's some seats right over here. You can feel free. I would never want to cause everybody to pay attention to you because everybody loves that. I actually love that. You guys need to just welcome our dear family that are walking in because I just embarrassed them. We should just do it further. <laughs> and, and I just want to ask for forgiveness right away. I'll probably never see you again. But this is a beautiful moment. And if I don't, I'm going to know that was my fault. My sheep hear my voice and I am the good shepherd. And the way that we know that he's the good shepherd is because he lays his life down. The hireling doesn't care about us and runs away at the first sign of trouble because they're just in it for other reasons. In this case, in it for money. Okay, but the, they're in it for other reasons. But Jesus says, I'm in it because I love you and my father loves you. Amen? So we have two things, and I want you to catch this. There's two things we have to understand about the premise of our safety, the premise of our hope, the premise of the reality of where we are and who we are and why we should feel safe. Everything that we have in God rests on this principle, as Jesus is saying, that he is a good shepherd, and we can hear the shepherd's voice. He's a good shepherd. We hear his voice, and we are his sheep. How helpful is a shepherd if you're not sheep? Not at all. How helpful is a shepherd if you are a sheep? Well, they mean all the difference in the world. <laughs> the foundation of what we're doing is resting on this, guys. Now, I think where we run into trouble in this life is that I think that a lot of us probably kind of have a problem with being a sheep. Like how many of you, when you were kids and you were playing, did any of you play games where you were all animals, like in the wild and you either did war or you played, or maybe you were all at peace and you were all animals and being really peaceful. For us, it was definitely a war. But I never chose sheep. I was like, I'm going to be a cheetah because they're the fastest thing on the ground. And if we're going to go to the air, I'm going to be a peregrine falcon because it is the fastest thing in the air. I'm like, and, and, and you know what? You know what I chose? I chose two predators. I didn't choose the hunted, I chose the hunter. I'm like, I will be a cheetah and I'll be coming at you at 70 miles an hour and pfft, don't even think that you're gonna win because I'm a cheetah. And if we're in the air, I'm a peregrine falcon because they go like 200 miles an hour in a dive. Unbelievable, incredible predator, power, yes, master of my, <laughs> of my life. I will, you better watch out, right? And how many of you guys were like, I'm gonna be like a... <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to be like, no, you're a hoppy sheep. I don't know. You're like a sheep parrot. Maybe some of you were kangaroos. That was supposed to be just a cute little sheep. Anyway, you're like, I'm a fluffy little sheep because, no, none of you. Did anybody here choose sheep? Of course you didn't because we're, because we're, because that's really a dependent animal. Like when you think of sheep, you don't think like attack sheep. <laughs> 
<laughs> there are sheep dogs to protect the sheep. You know, so like, what, you, what did you leave to protect your house? I got a sheep in the yard. I'm not even worried about it. <laughs> I left the sheep to watch over the house. I think there, I th- I'm glad we can laugh at ourselves, but I think that where the, the source of a lot of anxiety, the source of a lot of troubles in our life comes from the fact that we are actually in denial about a huge aspect of the kingdom and the reality of which we're a part. And that is that we are in denial about the fact that Jesus himself calls us his sheep. And we're like, me, right? How many of you guys are like, no, I am a, I am a cheetah. I am, <laughs> imagine Jesus is like, I am the outdoorsman and you are my hyenas. And you go out in packs and you attack large animals and you overcome them by numbers. You guys are like, yeah, I could be a hyena. I mean, they're, they're funky looking and they're a little crazy, but I'm a little crazy. But you know I'm local, right? So, <laughs> but he didn't say that. He said, I am the good shepherd and you guys are my sheep. Amen? You're my sheep. So how could that, how, so, so. The only way that that can be a blessing for us is if we understand that the reason why he's sharing this reality with us is that he never expected us to be the one that looks out for us. He's saying, I expect to look out for you. You are my sheep. And in fact, I'm going to prove to you what a good shepherd I am. I'm going to lay my life down for you because I love you. I love you. And you can hear my voice. You need to follow my voice. Sheep actually recognize the voice of their shepherd. So when he was talking about that, he was saying, listen, my sheep know my voice. If someone else calls out to them, they won't listen to them because they know my voice. So it's so vital. And this is why we've been talking about communicating with God because a lot of us are listening to a lot of different voices. And you know what, guys? There's a lot of hirelings out there, a lot of hired hands out there that are busy for a lot of different reasons seeking to lead people in different directions. But Jesus says, not so with you. I'm the good shepherd, and I want you to follow my voice. So we're sheep. Who in this room is happy that you're a sheep? A couple of you. All right. I want to convince you that it's not a bad thing. I know. Because I, I, st- I mean, I already preached for a service, and I got saved a couple of times, but I'm still just mildly happy about being a sheep. And I think by the end of this service, I'm going to be in with it. But here's the thing. We are sheep. We are his sheep. When we lose sight of the fact that we're sheep, it can be disastrous because we end up following or leading others into all kinds of trouble. And at its core, you know what this is? This is a trust issue. This is a trust issue because if we don't trust the shepherd, we won't follow his voice. And also, if we don't trust that that God made us sheep, then we're going to feel pretty insecure all the time. And we're going to ignore a whole lot of the actual gifts that he gave us through being sheep. Because we're trying to act like a cheetah or a peregrine falcon, when in fact he's actually called us to see ourselves as his sheep and him as the good shepherd. Now, why, why is that important? It's important because it causes us to understand a couple aspects of what he's trying to communicate in the reality of how God loves us and how he expects us to live in this world. And the first thing is we are to absolutely trust him and his voice above everything else. We are not supposed to go out and find our own way. We are not supposed to go out and try to figure out how we're going to provide for everything. We are not supposed to go out and figure out how to get together and kill the bear. We are actually called to trust the shepherd, to hear his voice, and to go where he's leading us, knowing that that means he will protect us, he will lead us, he will direct us, and we're 100% dependent on him to do that. Now, if we don't believe that, then we end up getting into some different trouble. Let me share a sheep story with you. This is a true story. This just happened a few years ago in Turkey. And uh, there's a particular village. And between the 26 families that were involved in this story, they had 1,500 sheep. And so a few shepherds were out moving the sheep from out in the pastures in to bring them to market. 
And so they're out. You got 1,500 sheep. Now, this is 26 people's different sheep. So they're used to different shepherds, but they're together on their way. And as they're coming through this mountainous area, it's morning time. The shepherds that were there step down and it's breakfast. So they sit down to have some breakfast and they look over. And as they look over, this one particular sheep is looking over at this crevasse. And the sheep apparently thinks to itself, I can make that jump. And it goes bolting over there and bah! it did not make the jump. It did not make the jump. And it wasn't because the shepherds were like, you know, calling like, come on, sheepies. I don't know what a sheep call is. But it wasn't because that, sh that sheep heard the, the shepherd's voice. And the shepherds are eating their sandwiches and they look over to see that sheep. And the other sheep go. And all 1,500 sheep jumped off that cliff. This is not a joke. 1,500 sheep, the entire year's economy of that village, jumps off the cliff because one leadership sheep decided, I don't need to hear the shepherd's voice. I know what's up. I'm going to clear the crevasse. And everybody else was like, hey, man, everybody else is doing it. And they just followed that sheep. Now, here's the bad news. 450 sheep died. The good news is that they formed a giant fluffy sheep pillow and 1,050 of them lived because they were falling on top of each other. And so there was still 1,050 that lived as they <laughs> fell into a soft fluffy sheep pillow. So there's a little bit of a, isn't that sad? It's terrible. That actually happened. Now, you and I, our affectionate, loving Savior, the shepherd, said, you are a sheep. Now, why is it important that we know that? Because if we don't know we're a sheep, we might be that lead sheep. Like, you know what? It's not that far of a jump. And I've been working out. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do this thing. In fact, I think the master's going to appreciate me showing a little initiative. And he's like, yeah. I was wrong. And then everybody's just like, what did he say? I think he said jump long. <laughs> and so here they go. Here's the thing. If we don't understand that we're sheep, we won't listen for the shepherd's voice. And we'll also assume that he wants us to, quote, take the initiative. But what are we doing when we do that? Why do we have to take the initiative? He, he said, if you love me, you will obey my commands. Not you'll go out there and try a few things and figure it out by a process of elimination. He said, my sheep hear my voice. So why, why do we need to try to lead when we're actually called to follow? Let me read to you a couple attributes of sheep. This is from a, um, an FFA article, and it's interesting. Characteristics of sheep. Sheep have a strong instinct to follow the leader. That's good news, right? As long as you have a good shepherd, that's a really good attribute, guys. As long as you're following the shepherd, that is a fantastic attribute. Let's read on. When one sheep decides to go somewhere, the rest of the flock usually follows, even if it's not a good decision, as we just heard. For example, if the lead sheep jumps over a cliff, the others are likely to follow. Even from birth, lambs are conditioned to follow the older members of the flock. Sheep are gregarious. They will stay together in a group when grazing. A sheep will become agitated if it's separated from the sheep or from the group. They're social animals, and when sheep are grazing, they must be able to maintain a visual link with at least four or five other sheep. All sheep have a flocking instinct to some extent. It's the sheep's flocking instinct that allows sheep herders to look after large numbers of sheep and lambs. Now think about this. Jesus says, by your love for one another... The world will know that my father sent me. He says, I want you to love each other the way that I've loved you and the way that you are loving and caring for one another. In fact, when you guys are together and other people see the way that you interact, it proves that I'm the good shepherd. We're actually called to be in a flock. We're called to be together. We actually show that Jesus Christ's message works because we stick together. 
It's good to know you're a sheep. It's like, oh, that instinct to want to be with you? Like, I want to be with you. That's not sick. That's not weird. That's not inter- or, uh, codependent. That's healthy. I'm supposed to feel that way. But here's the thing. We all need to remember we're sheep so that we don't just start listening to each other and not the shepherd. Now, here's what's beautiful about the word, you guys. This is the shepherd's voice. And when you and I listen to the shepherd's voice together, we end up going the right direction. We're interdependent. And it gets even better. It gets even better. Listen to this. All sheep have a flocking instinct to some extent. It's the sheep's flocking instinct that allows the sheep herders to look after large numbers of sheep and lambs. So we're looking out for each other by sticking together. Sheep are prey animals. That's the part I didn't like. I mentioned that earlier. It is flocking together in large groups that protect sheep from predators. Did you get that? Yeah. It's in being together that protects sheep from predators. Why? Because predators will go after the outliers in the flock. In other words, the banana that leaves the bunch gets eaten. When we stick together, we have better instincts to identify predators. This is interesting as well. They have excellent, sheep have excellent senses. Their wide angle of vision allows them to see predators, and they can direct their ears to the direction of the sound. My sheep hear my voice. We're actually tuned, in Jesus' metaphor of us as sheep, to hear his voice. Where's, where's, <laughs> oh, there he is. Okay. Well, but shepherd, Pete just jumped off the cliff. No, don't do that. Okay. Right? We have to listen for the voice of the shepherd. And we're actually in safety when we stick together. And through the Holy Spirit and through the scriptures and in all the different ways that he communicates, it centers us on the voice of the good shepherd. But all of our hope, all of our safety, all of our direction absolutely depends on that he is a good shepherd and that we can hear his voice. It's a pretty good idea that if Jesus says we're sheep, that we understand the strengths of that as well as our inherent weaknesses. Amen? Amen? I think a lot of us, the reason why we don't want to be a sheep is because they seem so darn innocuous and pathetic and weak and their followers. <laughs> Anyone agree here? <laughs> it's like, really, Lord, sheep? He's like, yes, and I love you. You're the most valuable crown of creation but it only works if you trust me as your shepherd and you follow me. How many of you guys understand that maybe it's a good thing to be a sheep? Are you warming up to it? All right, because Jesus says we are. So at this point, if you don't want to be a sheep, you're going to have to take it up with the good shepherd. But I want to encourage us to recognize that there's a strength to understanding what we are so we can understand both the strengths of what God offers and also the weaknesses if we abandon how he wants us to respond to him and to each other. Here's another interesting uh, thing that can happen with sheep. This is another true story. Um, It was not in Turkey, but in another place. A bear jumped out and ate a sheep. There were 200 sheep grazing, and all of a sudden a bear jumps out and gets one of them. And before the shepherd can get involved, the sheep are like, danger! And they ran from that danger like any sheep, good sheep would, Right off of a cliff, and 199 sheep. There's no sheep pillow this time because it was a much higher cliff. They all died. So he lost all of his sheep in one swell foop because danger showed up and ate Petey. And everybody's like, I know what to do. And so to avoid the bear, they all killed themselves, which was what they were trying to avoid in the first place. You guys, fear makes us stupid. It it, it does. Fear makes us stupid. So it's really, really important that we trust in the good shepherd and never allow ourselves to react out of fear. Run to the shepherd, not from the thing you're scared of. 
Are you with me? Now think about, think about all the scary voices in the world right now that are just absolutely calling to us to follow them one way or another. Sell everything, get gold, head to Montana. Get out of the stock market, go to Texas. All right? Watch out, World War III is about to happen. Okay? It, there's a, and that's just a few. I feel like the temperature just changed. You guys are like, oh, man, I literally just bought a place in Montana. Um, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> the, the point that I'm trying to make is that you don't know what to do. You're not supposed to know what to do until you hear the voice of the good shepherd. He sees the bear, but that doesn't mean that the opposite direction is where you're supposed to be going. I want to read to you a lovely poem that was written by a really good shepherd about a really good shepherd. And it's Psalm 23. I want to read it to you in, uh, uh, first of all, I'm going to read it to you just very quickly. It's, this is uh, the Songs of David in meter, written in 1650. And it's just lovely, so I'm going to read it to you. The Lord's my shepherd, I will not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green he leadeth me, the quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make within the paths of righteousness, even for his own name's sake. Yea, though I walk in death's dark veil, yet will I fear none ill, for thou art with me, and thy rod and staff my comfort still. My table thou hast furnished in presence of my foes, my head thou dost with oil anoint, my cup overflows. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me, and in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. You see, David understood that God was his shepherd. David had these incredible promises from the Lord, but as he's walking out then, seeing these things come to pass, it was not without troubles. It was not without um, things going on in life. And in each of these things, he's writing a song, and he's writing a song about the good shepherd. And I want to share a couple of points about that, and then I want us to take time to pray together. He begins with, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want... He's saying all of my needs are absolutely met by the good shepherd. It is because of the shepherd that I know that I will not be left in want. I won't be left without what I need because the Lord is my shepherd. How many of us, when we find ourselves afraid, it's because we think we won't be provided what we need. We have anxiety, we have fear, we run to here and there. But the Lord is your shepherd. And because he is your good shepherd, you shall not want. He will take care of you. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. What's the, name, what's the word you kept hearing over and over again just then? He. he. Who? The good shepherd. He does it. I don't find the green pastures. I don't figure out how to lay down by the still waters. I don't restore my own soul. I don't lead myself in the path of righteousness. He does it for his namesake because he's the good shepherd and he loves me. So I don't need to worry about that because that's the stuff he does. And I hear his voice. David is encouraging us. Look, what I need, where I need to be led, how I'm doing versus how he's leading, it's all on, I'm sorry, that was confusing. What I need, where he leads, all of this is what he's doing. My righteousness is what he's doing. I can count on the shepherd. Can you receive that? He's going to give you everything that you need. He's the one that causes us to lie down. How often do we have that, that busy, busy engine inside of us where you just can't stop? you got to keep working. Why? What do you have to prove? What do you have to prove? Who are you trying to impress? How much is enough to where you can feel safe? How much wealth do you have to build so you can rest? How much security do you have to have? How much information is it going to take? And for all of us that have tried to find that as our comfort instead of the shepherd, we know it's never enough. So therefore, you can never rest. But if he is our shepherd, and he is, and he's a good shepherd, then I can rest because he leads me beside the still water, and he says, rest. I got this. I don't expect you to be a, 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 a cheetah peregrine falcon that shoots lasers. You are a sheep. I understand your limitations. I'm the good shepherd. I'm going to give you rest. I'm going to lead you in the path of righteousness. So that's what he's doing. 
And then I get to respond. Yay. You notice that the psalmist changes now. Yay, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now he's talking about first person. It's just me and you, Lord. First he's saying, here's all the things he does, the good shepherd. But now he's like, okay, now it's getting real. We're in the valley of the shadow of death. Now, 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 now I want the good shepherd. I, I'm walking through this. I will fear no evil for you are with me. My good shepherd, your rod and your staff, they come for me. You know what that rod was for? It's for whacking that bear. Remember when David talked about killing the bear with his bare hands because it stole a lamb? How awesome is that picture? Look out, there's a bear grabbing a lamb and David's just like, woo, woo, just, ah. If you think about, that's David. This is the great shepherd, Jesus, who lays his own life down. He just tears the bear's head off. Give me that lamb. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) I like the fact, too, that he says, your staff, comfort me. What's the staff for? Hey, hey, whoa, come back here, buddy. You're getting a little out of line. Come here. It's got a hook on it. (laughs) Come on back. It's like me. (laughs) It comforts me. You can be comforted. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. I love this. In the presence of my enemies. There's my enemy. Ah, ah. Here comes inflation. Here comes Russia. Ah. Everything is a lie. Ah. The Illuminati is in your house. Okay, what are you doing, Lord? He's like, come on over, I got wine. Come here, let me anoint your head with oil. Sit down. Oh, yeah, I see your enemy. Don't worry, I got the, I got the rod. Yeah. I'm going to deal with this. Don't be afraid of the bear. Yeah. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. As we prepare to pray, I do want to say this. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Does that mean we don't walk through the valley of the shadow of death? We know he will lead us through that. Does that mean we won't see the enemy? We know we will see the enemy, but he is with us. And further, he says this, goodness and mercy will follow you. I'll be with you in the midst of the hardest of times, but I will continue to bless you. And when your precious death does happen, because you guys, reality makes no sense outside of the scope of eternity. You and I will all die, and our death is precious to him. And when we die, we'll stand before that righteous, beautiful judge who will reward us according to everything we've done in his name. And the fact that we've called for Jesus, who's made us the righteousness of Christ, will be forgiven because he paid for our debts and our mistakes. So justice will be served because Christ took all punishment and destroyed sin and death. And so righteousness is fulfilled. Justice is fulfilled in Christ. And for those who refuse to turn to him, he will give them according to their works. And justice will be fulfilled. So we will have justice without mercy for those that reject God, and we will have justice with mercy for those of us that choose him. But all things will be well, and all things will be well, and all things will be well. You see, no matter what happens, our good shepherd will care for us, and we will dwell in his house forever. Our trust is in a good God, and we hear his voice. So wherever you are right now, maybe, maybe you're wondering about what you need. The shepherd's going to provide it. Maybe you're wondering about where to go and what to do. The shepherd is leading you and he's going to lead you. Maybe you're concerned about how you're doing right now. You're stuck and you're like, oh my goodness, I, keep, I can, just can't get it right. Well, you know what? He is the good shepherd and for his namesake, he will lead you into the paths of righteousness. You will not always be stuck. He's not giving up on you. Keep going. Follow him. Trust him. Maybe you're focusing on what you're afraid of. The good shepherd has the club. He's going to protect you from the bear. Wherever you are right now, wherever you see yourself in this psalm, and please return to this psalm, the good shepherd is your good shepherd. He's our good shepherd, and we are his sheep, and we hear his voice. Can you receive that? So in response right now, we're going to close with this. And here's how we're going to do this. We're going to take five minutes and we're going to get with one other person and we're going to pray with them. And we're just going to say, man, here's the part of that sermon that really stuck with me. 
I'm leaping Petey. I'm afraid I'm leading other people, and I don't remember what God wants me to do. I don't know. That's me, actually. I'm leaping Petey. I'm much more likely to be like, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. I'm going to go check out this cliff. And when I look at that, I have to go, Lord, I've forgotten you're a good shepherd, and I'm not trusting your timing right now. I'm acting like you don't see everything that's going on, and you, you're, you're actually preparing a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and I'm going to leap over this crevasse right now. I'm sorry, Father, forgive me. And so whoever I get with, you already know what you need to pray about me for. I have a tendency to try to take the initiative, but it's a trust issue. And when I'm honest, I go, oh, wait, you're the good shepherd. So share with one other person where you're at. And uh, you can share as, as, as deep as you want or as little as you want, but we're just going to respond to this and then pray for each other. So share with one other person. Okay, everybody who considers yourself an extrovert, stand up. Extroverts, stand. Okay, quick, go find somebody. Everybody else, hurry up and try to get with somebody before they get to you. <laughs> Five minutes, the extroverts are coming. They're coming. You're going to pray with somebody that don't know you. All right, five minutes and we'll pray and then, uh, then I'll come up and we'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up.